Spirit. Amen. The text is from the Gospel, just read to you, especially these verses. As they were talking about these things, Jesus Himself stood among them and said, Peace be to you. But they were startled and frightened and thought they saw a spirit. And He said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? See My hands and My feet, that it is I Myself. Touch Me and see. For a spirit does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when He said this, He showed them His hands and feet. And while they were still disbelieving for joy and were marveling, He said to them, Have you anything to eat? They gave Him a piece of broiled fish and he took it and ate it before them. This is the text. My fellow redeemed in Christ, dear Christian friends, imagine that you're at a gathering of people. You're standing by the fireplace with a nice plate, plate of finger food when you mention to the people with whom you are gathered that you would like to talk about Easter. Someone responds, no, thank you. We're having a serious discussion about education in America. So you listen for a while as they discuss things like class sizes, teachers' salaries, and how high their property taxes are. Then they start reminiscing about their own school days, yellow school buses, packing a lunch, the prom at the senior high school, pop quizzes, and the hardest teacher they ever had. You want to interrupt and you want to bring up other details, such as how so many good dedicated teachers get burned out. Sometimes they even wind up buying supplies for their classrooms. You also might want to remind them about how peer pressure can be so destructive that it leads many young people to depression or even worse. But there's never a break in the conversation. So you go on to another group of people. You walk over to those folks and you say to them, Hi. I'd like to talk about Easter. Someone else responds, no thanks. We're having a serious discussion about hunger in America. And that is a good discussion to have. So you listen for a while as they discuss how sad it is that food pantries and soup kitchens can't keep up with the demand. And you want to interrupt and you want to mention other details such as how hunger is a silent reality for many Americans who are too embarrassed to admit their need. You also want to talk about the elderly who have to make a choice between food and medication because they're on a fixed income. You'd like to mention as well the many children who simply cannot understand why there is no food in the house. Sadly, however, there's never a break in the conversation. You try another group. This time, the people look at you and smile for the most part. They invite you into their midst, and you say to them, I'd like to talk about Easter. And they have expectant looks, and you begin. And you tell them how on that first day of the week, early dawn, a group of women went to the cemetery outside Jerusalem city limits, and they came there with myrrh and aloes, and they fully expected to find the body of Jesus. Well, when they got there, they were surprised. The stone had been rolled away. There was no body. In some accounts, there was an angel or angels sitting in the tomb. No one there at all. What they expected did not happen. You talk about that. You talk about that for a while. And also, you talk about when the women went back to tell the other disciples what they'd seen the men who were there were skeptical about what they said. And one of your listeners chuckles and says that he, he can see why the disciples thought that it would be an idle tale. He wonders why it's necessary to even hear about Easter again. It happened a couple weeks ago. It's over. Done with. Gone. He says further that he feels like he's in Sunday school and this is a remedial story and he'll take himself somewhere else. And he leaves. But if he'd stuck around... You could have reminded him that even though the disciples questioned the women's account of the events, they never treated those events like they were superficial, nor did they walk away from that first Easter morning. 
Peter ran to the cemetery, and Peter did his own investigation, perhaps looking for evidence of grave robbers who were very common in that day. He examined the scene before returning to the others. He was perplexed and confused and yet amazed at what he'd seen. Later, when Jesus appeared before them, they were frightened and they thought they'd seen a ghost. The disciples had a lot of worldly wisdom. They knew a lot about the local politics and that's why they were hiding. They knew a lot about that. They also knew the best place in the Sea of Galilee to catch fish, but they didn't know yet about the resurrection. They didn't know yet about the story of Easter. So Jesus said to them, look at me closely. See my hands, see my feet, touch me. A ghost does not have flesh. A ghost does not have flesh and bones as I do. Jesus appeared to them and spoke to them and even asked them for something to eat. Jesus refused to let his disciples run away or to treat what was happening as if it were a mere story. He took their worldly understandings and went beyond mere appearances to something deeper. The one who was dead was now alive. Something quite serious and quite wonderful was revealed on that first Easter. And that is what we talk about in church. That is what we talk about and why we want to talk about Easter. We talk about God and an original promise. We talk about the promise being broken. We talk about Jesus. We talk about a cross, an empty tomb, and a risen Lord. But it's the farthest thing from being superficial. It's the farthest thing from being idle because this Easter talk is one of the most serious stories that we know. It's about death and resurrection. It's about hope that is stronger than all the darkness and despair on the earth. It is about the most intimate, deep, and personal connection that exists in this life. Because it tells the story of God's love for us and assures us that if we believe in God's Son, when we die, we'll live forever. And that's the best news. The best news ever heard. Easter is about a loving re-engagement between God and us, and it exceeds all our expectations. It's more than we could ever hope for. It's more than we deserve. It happened to the women who were the first to discover and report the first Easter. Women who were marginalized in society at the time, they were the first people to receive the good news. It happened to the other disciples as well. They were huddled in the upper room behind locked doors lest they be arrested and face death. And this loving re-engagement is given to each successive generation. It didn't stop with the first disciples. It's continued ever since, and thankfully it includes us. God in Christ through the Holy Spirit participates intimately and deeply in our world in a world where children sit in classrooms and teachers teach, where choices are made about people's lives and how we will share resources, how they'll be allocated. The responsibility is given to each of us in every subsequent generation. Just yesterday, and some of you were there at the mall for the Festival of the Young Child, just yesterday we got to see many different exhibits and displays and people that had the theme of the young child and St. St. John's of course was there and the preschool sang and it was very lovely because we got to sing about Jesus in the mall to other people and we got to be witnesses and we got to see how the world and the church is commingled together and we got to not only just let those kids sing as only the voices of tiny children can sing. But we got to to be part of this whole promise to show that the Easter promise is alive and well, to be bold witnesses for Jesus in a winsome and a wonderful way. And that's a good thing. That's one of the great things that we're able to do in one of our many ministries here at St. John's is to, to be a witness through the school and to also be a witness through to ourselves and our lives. 
God in Christ, through the Holy Spirit, participates intimately and deeply in our world, we are allowed to do that as well. God in Christ, through the Holy Spirit, participates intimately and deeply in our world of politics, law, in our world of wars, and fragile peace. This world can never be understood through mere conversation that relies solely on facts and statistics. It is a world far more complicated, far more wonderful, far more theologically deep for casual stories and for party conversation. The truth be told, it's skepticism and doubt that's superficial. Faith involves real depth. Faith involves real courage. Being afraid to engage or embrace the deep complexity of life is what causes people to walk away from the church muttering over their shoulders that they've got better things to do. But by contrast, it's the desire to connect deeply with life, to love even when it's risky, and to trust in those things which we cannot see, but we believe in our hearts. Those are the things that truly matter. It is in these Sundays after Easter that we see the vibrancy of the primal church, the early church. And we see the great contrast between people in an upper room who are scared and paranoid about being arrested, and yet they also go out in the book of Acts and proclaim the gospel, and some are even stoned later, and some even die. It's a serious story. It's a good story. It's our story given to us by Jesus. And as the old hymn says, I love to tell the story because it's true. This is the serious story we talk about in church. God loves us so much that God refused to leave us, leave us alone in our sin. He wouldn't do that. And sometimes this love causes me to tremble, 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 as we heard sung on Good Friday as we stood beneath the cross of Christ. And sometimes this love fills me with wonder and joy as we witnessed on Easter morning standing before the empty tomb Christ is risen, Alleluia. He is risen indeed, Alleluia. These things move me to take seriously the story of God's intimate and abiding love that is stronger than death. So yes, let's talk about Easter. Amen. We pray. Loving God, we thank You for the story of Easter. May we be encouraged this day always to tell it, share it, and live it. For in this story you have drawn near to us in ways that give us true life that is our hope and our greatest joy. We offer ourselves to you this day in Christ's name. Amen.